going to give us some electric slides? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Chucking the books I really, really love, really care about them. Come to the Royal Court Library and vandalise it. Hi, I'm Travis Alabanza. I'm a playwright. I'm the writer of Sound of the Underground at the Royal Court. And I'm here in the Samuel French bookshop to tell you about some plays that I really love. I haven't read it, but I heard it's all right. I've got to pick Seven Methods of Killing Kylie Jenner by Jasmine Lee Jones, because it would be rude not to, because I'm in the Royal Court. Um, but beyond that, I remember seeing this show after I had kind of gotten really bored with theatre and I felt like nothing was fresh anymore. I felt like nothing was risky. I felt like nothing was talking about politics in a way that still felt exciting and funny and dark and risky. And then Jasmine said, you just got to get tickets to more shows that she writes, um, which is great. I love it. I think it's so daring. I love a play with a good title. I love a play that makes you make assumptions with a title. Um, and yeah, obviously it's just created an iconic legacy. And an, I think that is so cool to have. Do I just chuck him? See you later, Jasmine. <laughs> um, we'll go here maybe next. Um, I think Ross Willis is an absolutely wild writer. Um, they're so imaginative and they are so descriptive with their world and they also really mess with like time and place. And I like a writer that doesn't take the form of theatre too serious or takes the, f the act of play as a serious thing to do. And I think all the plays that Ross does, the way that they write is with like a wink to everyone saying that I know we're kind of messing around and I just find that so relaxing and accessible. What I love is that once you start that first minute of the play, you kind of are on this wild ride until the very end and the actors must be exhausted, Ross must be exhausted, the audience are kind of exhausted and I love that they have the ability to do that with all their work. Um, and I just think they're really cool. And anything they do, I think people should see. So yeah, that's Ross Willis. <laughs> mm, I don't know, that was bad, wasn't it? Throwing that book. Where am I going next? Oh. Surprise. <laughs> um, the next one I wanted to pick was The High Table by Tammy Wilkie. It was at the same time as archiving a queer Nigerian love story, which kind of speaks to the absence of that in not just British theatre, but like kind of all texts. It was at the same time, just a really good rom-com and had all the like classic beats of a rom-com where it feels like silly and playful and will they, won't they? But at the same time, you understood the gravitas of what it meant for this to be on a main stage in a theatre. And Temi did that really cleverly, I felt, by referencing ancestors as this kind of other realm within the play. So you have the live action of the rom-com and then these ancestors would um, kind of discuss what was going on in the rom-com in front of us. And I felt like that was a way of getting the point across of how this love story is one that should have been told for years and gets the history of that love story in. But it felt so playful, so fun. And also the show ended with everyone doing the electric slide in the audience, which I think is just, um, yeah, how can, they, how can you not mention it then? Um, so yeah, I was so proud of Temi for this work and it felt like such an important moment in black British theatre to have this. Can you give us some electric slide? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Chucking the books I really, really love, really care about them. Come to the Royal Court Library and vandalise it. Oh my God, what's this? Oh. Um, I'm kind of cheating because I'm picking loads of plays for this one. Um, but this is the Black British Queer Plays and Practitioners Anthology. Um, but it includes loads of people's plays from different generations and that's why I really love this book. Um, you can get High Table and you can get Burgers, but importantly you can see how 
black queer British theatre isn't something that's new. I think there's this obsession with um, the current way that we programme stuff to suggest that every story is a story that we've never seen before. And what I love about this anthology is it kind of shows you that these stories have always been told, but they've been told in different ways and in different forms and in different styles and by different practitioners. I think this is like a really cool education to see how similar issues are talked about in really vast different ways and to get kind of like a history nod of like, okay, this is what this would have sounded like in the 80s or the 90s or the early noughties, right until like present day by Tammy and I's work as well. Um, so often we are placed as like the only one or black queer work isn't allowed to be read alongside each other. Normally there'll be like one black queer play if we're lucky in an anthology of black work or one piece of black work in an anthology of wider work and that work probably wouldn't be black and queer. There we go, this one. I'm not gonna throw this one because it's big and hefty. So I'm just gonna slide it. There we go. Um, yeah, the last show um, is He's Dead by Malik Nashad Sharp. Um, and this doesn't have a play text, which is actually the reason that I picked it. Um, I think it says so much in this show without any words. Um, I guess people that are lazy might call it a dance piece, but I think that what Malik does with choreography is make shows that are theatre, they just don't have any words. Um, it tells the story of Tupac and depression and mental health, um, all done from like live movement. What I love about Malik's work is that it literally feels like dialogue on stage. Um, it sounds really wanky to say, but I feel like Malik shows like the technical prowess that is in like black, like dance and black moves and puts them on stage and doesn't preface them as like a side thing, but gives them like the respect that they deserve. The visuals for this show is like stunning. Um, and for me, it's like about a visual world. In fact, all of the plays I've chosen, the visual wor worlds are just so strong. And um, yeah, I feel like I left He's Dead feeling really sad and depressed. And then that is like a great power of an artist to not say a word, but you leave the space feeling really emotionally affected. Um, and Malik does that so well. Cool, imagine if I wrote that.